Okay, so let's look at our um, last example, and the last example will be a marble. rolling back and forth a marble rolling back and forth in a bowl um, let me just give you a sense of how the situation would actually look so if you'd imagine a bowl like this and we put a marble on one side what will obviously happen when I let go of the marble is it's going to roll down to the bottom, picking up speed, and then it will start to slow down as it rolls back up the other hill, other side of the bowl, I should say, and then it'll come to a stop, and then begin to roll back down, picking up speed in the opposite direction, and so forth, on and on and so forth. So what we want to um, do is to sort of establish a uh, coordinate system. So if we decided that down here was the zero, um, then we might imagine that the positive side was over here. The positive side and then this side over here would be the negative side. So what's going to happen is we're going to start with a negative displacement and then we're going to roll downward picking up speed as we go in the positive direction continue past this zero point into the positive side of the number line then we'll stop at some maximum value and then we'll roll back down this direction so let's take a look at what the position time or the displacement time graph would look like so if you notice that at the beginning of this situation we are at a maximum negative position and we're going to release this object with no velocity. So that means that our initial position looks something like this. We're down here at a negative position. And more importantly, we are um, have no velocity. So that means that the slope would be very flat at the beginning. No slope, no velocity. And what's going to happen is I'm going to pick up velocity traveling in the positive direction. I'm heading over towards the positive side. So what's going to end up happening is I know that my slope is going to have to get steeper and steeper and steeper. And actually my slope will become the greatest at the zero point. Here's the zero point down here. So as I'm coming down, I'm picking up speed. That's my fastest. That's where my slope has to be the steepest. Now what's going to happen as I travel onto the positive side of the bowl is that I'm going to find that the speed begins to slow down. So where I got a very fast velocity in the beginning, now I'm going to see the velocity starting to flatten out. Again, reaching no slope, no velocity. That's over here on the other side, where I reach the other side of the bowl, and I come to a stop on the top side of the, of the bowl. Now at that point, what's going to happen is it will begin to move backwards down the bowl. So I will now have negative velocity. I'm going to be traveling in the negative direction both increasing my negative displacement and increasing my negative velocity. So now this slope, which was very flat up at the top, now needs to turn and become more negative. So I'm going to see the slope getting steeper and steeper and steeper in the downward direction, in the negative direction, reaching its maximum as we reach right back here to the origin or the bottom of the bowl. At that point, I'll begin to roll up on the negative side. So you notice I'm about to enter into the negative displacements. I'm about to enter the negative positions. And what happens as I move up into the negative displacements or positions is that the velocity begins to decrease. So right now, my slope is very steep, which indicates a very uh, great velocity, very large velocity. And what I need to happen is I need for that line to begin to flatten out and become zero again as I reach this far side. So no slope, no velocity, increasing the steepness of the slope in the positive direction as I roll down the bowl, then reaching the bottom of the bowl and beginning to slow down. Now my slope begins to flatten out. So now my slope up here begins to start to flatten out. And at the very top up here, I have no velocity just like I would have at the top up here at my maximum positive displacement. Look, I'm at my maximum positive displacement up here at the edge of the bowl. 
and I have no velocity, which is what you would expect at the top of the bowl. Then it begins to slide backwards, so now I'm going to see my velocity begin to increase, but increase in the negative direction, reaching its maximum right there at the point where we cross the zero again on the way back across, entering into the negative displacements, and now I see my velocity beginning to start to flatten out, I'm trying to keep this sort of tangent to the line at all points, and I can see that by the time I reach the end of the time here, I'm back to the other side, I have no slope, no slope to this, therefore no velocity, and that's what you'd expect back here at the other side of the bowl. Now the, the real question is, uh, what does the VT graph look like? So let's take a look at that one. So here's positive V, here's negative V, and our time axis. Well, if you notice that in the beginning, we had no velocity at all. We had no velocity at all. And then I increased to a maximum velocity right here, where my slope is the greatest. So what happened was I started with no velocity, and my velocity became increasingly positive from very flat to very steep in the positive direction. That's going to look something like this. Okay, and at this point, our graphs are at the same place. Maximum slope, maximum velocity, maximum velocity up here. Then what started to happen was that the velocity began to sort of, uh, sorry, the slope, I should say, began to flatten out indicating that the velocity also was beginning to decrease until eventually at this point here the velocity was zero so we see that the velocity decreased now until it reached zero but it didn't stop there okay so if you think about what was happening from here to here it was the same change in velocity my velocity is becoming uh, I'm losing velocity losing velocity until I reach zero but then I just continue right on and continue to lose velocity, or that is to say to increase the velocity in the negative direction. So what's going to happen with the graph is that we're just going to pass right through this zero point and we're going to continue on to a point down here. So now this point, my maximum negative velocity, just as you can see over here on this graph, I have a very steep slope to the curve and so that indicates a very large velocity. And then the velocity begins to sort of flatten out. So you can see that as we follow the curve, it begins to drastically flatten out as the object is losing its negative velocity and returning back to zero velocity. So that's going to look something like this. And you, I'm sure, will realize that the area underneath this graph represents the displacement. So in the beginning, up until this point, I had a large positive displacement. I have a large positive area, positive displacement. I've increased very greatly my positive displacement. That's exactly right. I went from a negative displacement way down here all the way up here, which is a very large positive displacement. I was moving up the displacement or the position time uh, graph. Then, at that point, having reached my maximum displacement, I now move into the negative displacements. And so now I'm starting to accumulate, as I move across, a very large uh, negative displacement. Well, that's exactly what happened. I started up here at a very large positive displacement. I came down and followed the curve down to here, at which point I am now back to a very large uh, negative displacement. And so ultimately, these two areas are the same, and what that would indicate was that I was right back where I started from. I initially accumulated a big positive displacement, but then accumulated a very large, equally large negative displacement. These two will cancel each other out, and I'm right back where I started from, which should make sense. That is exactly what happened. I went down and across, very large positive displacement, then the exact same negative displacement as I came back over to the other side. This technique is going to be uh, very crucial for you on the exams and quizzes to be able to take a graph, if I were to give you this graph or to give you this graph, and to roughly sketch out without any numbers whatsoever um, what the shape of the other graph must look like, going from a position time graph to a velocity time or from velocity time to a, a position time graph. This is one of the most complicated ones, um, but it should be something that's within your means to think about in the case of, for example, velocity. How do you get velocity off this graph? Well, that's the slope. How do you get displacement 
on this graph, well, that's the area of this graph. So you really have to think carefully about what's going on in one graph and how do you get these other properties? How do you get displacement off the VT? How do you get velocity off the position time? And you should be able to translate the two uh, graphs without a great deal of difficulty.